As XRP becomes more and more popular, there is now a standoff between Ripple and the SEE. The latest court filings show that Ripple, XRP, and the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission remain involved in a legal dispute. The SUSE started the lawsuit in late 2020, and even though Ripple obtained temporary relief from a verdict last year, the legal battle is ongoing. From the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission to Ripple, conversations have been ongoing, with the SEC waging a fierce legal battle earlier this year. Ripple asked the court to get an order compelling it to disclose its institutional sales contract in 2022 and 2023 financial data. In determining whether or not Ripple's planned sales of XRP were compliant with the court's summary judgment ruling, the company did not contest its ability to pay to that end. Ripple argued in its defense that the discovery period had ended in August 2021 and that its financial situation and actions were relevant to investors. In response, Ripple sought to file a certain reply on January 24, despite the SEXI's declaration on January 23 that a comprehensive review of these contracts was required. Additionally, Ripple refuted the SEXI's assertion that it had created and preserved a record of every XRP sales contract, asserting that the class action lawsuit excluded any agreements made after December 22, 2020. Ripple had moved into the oversold region on the XRP daily period chart, which was declining as of this writing. The price was $0.05, cents, down about $0.1.8 cents from the day before. Based on its relative strength index, as of this writing, it was weaker than neutral, with the RSI being around a study of the total number of Ripple XRP holders on a move, as well as a trading viewpoint on the direction of the token, revealed a daily pattern of consistency as new holders joined the token's population, which at the time of the analysis was about 5 million. How much are 11,100 XRPs worth right now? The number of holders has not changed or expanded substantially, which is noteworthy in light of the asset's current problems. A steady number of holders are drawn to it and stay with it. Based on this, it appears that the protracted legal struggle between Ripple Labs and the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission continues. In an attempt to rectify what Ripple views as a significant distortion, the second party has launched legal proceedings. The American fintech company responded to the SEC's accusations with a letter stating that the SEC was not warranted in requesting to examine more financial data and that the commission might seek any material it thought necessary. Because the SEC is defending itself by requesting audited financial documents, the legal disagreement revolves around Ripple Labs' position with respect to XRP sales contracts. Comparably, Ripple said that the request was too noble and that it ought to be rejected noting that the case did not meet the conditions for an interlocutory appeal. In response to the court's order for summary judgment, Ripple emphasizes that the ongoing class action lawsuit does not apply to contracts dated after December 22, 2020. An in-depth examination of the regulation's objectives and the secretary of if Ripple's planned XRP sales are legal, the SEC argues, a detailed examination of post-complaint institutional sales contracts is necessary. The SEC also rejects Swirl's claims that any fines have no impact on their financial situation. To evaluate any future violations by Ripple, the company contends that all XRP sales contracts ought to be kept intact. On the other hand, the secretary asserts that all contracts have been collated and made available to the public. The court overruled Ripple's objections, citing earlier case law, they considered the defendant's wealth when deciding on deterrent penalties. In highlighting the significance and legitimacy of the discovery requests, the SEC asserts that it is entitled to particular information on Riverside's financial standing and institutional sales contracts at the time of the complaint's filing. Ripple's dispute with the SEC has far-reaching legal implications that go well beyond the revelation of XRP sales contracts and the dire state of the business's finances. The court's ruling in this case could have a big impact on future precedent setting for digital asset regulation. With neither party wanting to budge from their hardline positions, everyone is waiting to see what will happen next in this intense court drama. In the last year, among other rulings, Ripple has won cases against the SEC, including one in which the company was asked to file an interlocutory appeal. There's been a historic incident that could significantly change the value of XRP. If you're concerned about your investments in the cryptocurrency and aren't sure if you should sell, 
the causes of your XRP sales that exceed $10,000 will also be looked at. Not very long ago, you were preoccupied with your electronics and apparently no one told you about the important XRP news that originated in the US. Remember to come back for updates on what happened, how the XAP price is affected, and whether or not this is the right route to profit at the Davis World Economic Forum. Ripple Lab CEO Brad Garlinghouse is almost guaranteed to be present. If the corporation was a sponsor for the current year last year, it's unclear if it was their similar role this year. That's just speculation, though. The most important thing is that he raised an important point that might propel XRP's uptake, especially in the U.S. and the international financial industry. The main goal of the discussion between Ripple and XRP is that XRP's relationship with banks and potentially governments, which was previously seen with mistrust, appears to be the driving force behind its value. Despite the fact that working closely with governments is sometimes considered unfavorable. Since I was ignorant of the circumstances and repeated XRP's detractor allegations without offering any proof, I must admit that I was just as bewildered as many skeptics and current developments in the Bitcoin space are fascinating. SEC hostility toward XRP is the main reason Stellar has been awarded a large government contract. Due to this disagreement with the government, we were unable to reach possible all-time highs during her previous bull run. If these issues hadn't come up with Gary, we might be around 110 XRP now. I offer that as you As most of you know, we were able to get the ETF approved. However, XRP has consistently shown itself to be a better point of sale option for banking in situations where traditional banking software has fallen short, since it can modernize this intricate banking system, which is decades old and hasn't seen significant improvements in a long time. Ripple is unique. Though critics have long pointed out a significant flaw in the early Ripple software versions, it is well known that Ripple's ultimate goal is to enable XRP-based cross-border transactions via their advanced point-of-sale system. This would require banks all over the world to hold XRP in a manner similar to a global reserve currency. This was a major setback for Ripple Labs, even though they were able to accomplish it. Critics claimed that the token would be useless without the ability to conduct transactions and use XRP in response. The problem with these versions was that they introduced current XRP, but they did not require banks to use XRP to settle transactions. Ripple offered two new things after pivoting in a different direction. Because XRP had to be purchased by any institution utilizing these services, all settlements had to be done XRP, demonstrating the token's true worth and usefulness. These were different goods, although they had some things in common with the first three, in order to satisfy consumer demand. Demand liquidity should ripple. Well, that's all for now. Remember to press the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to receive all our updates on XRP and other cryptocurrencies. See you next time.